tuned into the show that informs, improves, and inspires racers everywhere. The Northwest Super Late Model Recap. And now, here are your hosts, Terry Bridges and Jeff Eden. What is going on, racers? I'm your horsepower and performance host, Terry Bridges, and it is time for Late Model Monday. Sitting in with me, as always, the best crew chief in the business, the loader. Mr. Jeff Eden, what's going on, Jeffrey? Oh, just been enjoying this beautiful weather. Little, yeah. A little too warm, but... Is it really? Are you... Really? Yeah, to me, it does. Yeah. Wow. Fat man sweat when it gets well, hot. Well, yeah, but that's, you know, that's... that's I don't know. I just know... All I know is... All I know is half of what Houston got here in the winter for nine months. I can't stand it. <laughs> It's terrible. We got a great show for you tonight. We're going to do some recaps. Uh, we got some info from Evergreen. We got some info from South Sound. We got some info from down at the Civil War in, uh, I guess it was Colorado or is it Utah? It's Rocky Mountain. I don't know. I'm, I want to say it was Utah, but I, everybody says it. I don't know. Rocky Mountain Speedway? I don't know. That's crazy we are going to talk a little bit about the junior late models and the best thing of all is our blue line graphics in the seat guest tonight is going to be a legend the one well no wait the one of two i was gonna say but he's a junior so so see there is only one but there is two the second of two legends, Herschel McGriff Jr., going to be our guest tonight. I'm looking forward to this. I've never, I've never. You know what? Me, me too. I've never because, met him. Never talked to him. Absolutely. I've you know known him through the years of racing when he was down at the dirt running for the High Wallers. Um, got to meet him there, and uh, there was one night. Well, I'll get into it later. I don't want to. I don't. I don't want to ruin everything. Whale of a show. I talked to Michelle Martin. Michelle Martin Photography. If you haven't been there on Facebook, you need to go there. I'm sorry, but I'm just going to say this. She is the best around here that I've seen in a long time. She takes cool pictures. She has that eye for that unique she, shot. She does. You know, I really, that's what I like about it. And some of my favorite pictures are those ones that aren't staged, right? You get two guys talking, and it looks like, you know, you get the full deal or that concentration, that focus. Michelle Martin Photography. She's awesome. Well, what do you what do you know? Do you know anything? Late model-wise, what do, you, do you know anything special, different, new, on the horizon? No. Really, and I just kind of—I'm trying to soak in the whole weekend. I did a little sprint car racing last night, so I was kinda... right. So how do you do that, man? You switch it over to the late models. Boom, boom. This is when you're just the loader. You just get to do that stuff, right? Uh, I, you know, I enjoy all types of racing. So do I. So I, 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 I truly do. You know, I can go to the dirt. I love working on the dirt cars. I love that part of it. I right. Know. And I love the people that are down there, or at least most of them. Uh, and uh, I, I, and then I go to South Sound. I just wander in there and go hang out with the West. And um, Dan and Devin treat me just like I'm long lost friend. And I mean, I've known them for a while, but you know, come on in here. You know, chair here's water here. You know, and I enjoy. I just enjoy doing that stuff. And then I will wander around and I see something. I'll talk to somebody. I'm not bashful. I'll, so it, it, I enjoy doing it all. Right. Yeah. I, I think that's super cool. I mean, that's one of the reasons why I like floating around and announcing different stuff. Because, yeah, each crowd's just a little bit different, yeah. right? And it makes it, makes it cool when you can kind of know where you or how you have to be in a certain 
you know, each situation, you, you know, you're like a little chameleon. You got to be the, you know, you still get to be you, but you, you kind of just got to mold into what's going on. Yeah. And exactly. sometimes that's hard for people, but. Well, especially if you're really into one thing. Right. You know, if you're just into the go-karts or you're just into this, I mean, it becomes, the other becomes harder to be interested in. So where I, I enjoy it all, it's, I can be interested. I can go to the track. I'm interested. If it's oh, speed, I'm interested. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Might not be your genre, but you, even like, like I used to say drag racing, you know, eh, you know, gosh, that's a lot of stuff, you know, to just to go down and have to load up and maybe go home, you know, but that's the game and but i respect those guys and what they do yeah i mean and i it's, mean it's you know it's just you know if everybody wanted to do it right uh, it right it, although could you imagine how competitive it would be it's competitive if late my everybody wanted to do late models oh. holy smokes you guys i mean just think about that yeah that would be yeah john force Don Perdome. It's force. He'd be talking. Tom McEwen. He'd be going by you talking at you. <laughs> I mean, you know, there's, you know, there's, who, uh, Worsham, Kenny Bernstein. I mean, uh, uh, the Pedragon brothers. Yeah, dude. Who's the, who's the dude that drove for, for, uh, Perdome for a long time? Dixon. Yeah. Scott Dixon. I mean, that oh, kid Larry was, Dixon. or Larry Dixon. That kid was good. Yeah. And this last weekend at, at, uh, Indy, he drove an alcohol funny car. First time he'd ever drove one. And he did he kill it? Yeah, he was he did all right. He went last until second round, but you know. Still, that's pretty good. That's better than <laughs> Well, better. you know what, in that kind of stuff, you can be the best driver in the world and still go home in the second round. Oh yeah. Yeah. Right? So I mean it's all kinda you gotta dial the clutch, you gotta do all that stuff. Yeah. Anyway, late models. Good stuff. I, so Michelle Martin tells me crowd was huge. Track is gorgeous. Turnout was killer. They had 22 cars. Okay. So it's not 50, but still 22 to travel that far? I mean, I don't know what, what, it, what I mean. Well, I don't remember. Oh, there was a, what the split difference was there between the guys from the south and the guys from the west there. Well, nonetheless, 22 cars. Yeah. Any way you shake it. It's a good. It's a good field. That is a good field, I, I think. Uh, guy from Claremont, California. You know where Claremont, California is? South of here. <laughs> <laughs> so there we go. And and get this. How cool is this name? He's a rookie. Rookie Ricky Schlick. I am digging that. <laughs> you just loving it, are you? I'm digging it. Ricky Schlick. It don't get no better than that. Well, now if you get Cody Hoops to come and crew for him. <laughs> I know. That would be an unbeatable team. Ricky Schlick and Cody Hoops. Yeah. No kidding. But he gets his first win here. And he does it. He gets by Thorne late before a caution. I think they they had a caution with eleven to go. They say he withstood several restarts, which, as you know, is difficult oh, in the late stage, especially in a big race where you got some guns behind you. Well, not only that, you've been, you've you've done running a hundred and thirty some laps, and your your tires are gone. I mean, one little bobble and it's over with. You know, I know it's crazy, and he hangs on to win it. And here's another interesting fact, Jeff. It, it, um, he wins his first feature, which is, you know how it goes. Oh. They, we, we, you know, your first one. I mean, it's huge. But he also wins it at a track that he got one of his very first um, Legends car wins. Same place back in 2013. So this might become his favorite place to race. There you go. I mean, I would say, well, either that or it ranks highly <laughs> up there with very. With, high. Yes, yes. So here in ten grand for the win. Although they probably what fuel and entry and ten grand's a a good substantial amount of money, but they 
could you see where maybe they might say we broke even? Um, real close. That would be my thought. So, well, we let me say, earlier on, the last practice, he had some issues. He had clutch issues. So he did not get very much time. But here's the cool thing. Just like we talked about a couple weeks ago, when Tyler Tanner gets out of that car and he pulls Jeff Knight out, uh, Derek Thorne's crew helps Ricky Schlick get his clutch back together. I don't know. To me, that's cool. That's the way it should be. Right? And then they go out and compete and may the best man win. Yeah. That, that's cool. Any way you look at it, that's cool, I think. Um, at the halfway break, they gave him 15 minutes to take on fuel and get this. And make, and make approved changes. Hmm? What's approved? Here's my deal. If you're giving me 15 minutes, it better all be approved. (laughs) I should be able to put a round of wedge in if I want. I should be able to take a couple in, you know, whatever. Now, you know, I don't know. They didn't say anything about tires. So, which Garrett alluded to a couple weeks ago when we talked to him on the show, that he said, you know, that's what some of these things are doing. Like they were saying, you know, they get one set of tires, right? And they got to make them last. I don't know. But approved changes. Here's what I'm going to say. And no, I'm not being a jerk. I'm just saying. I'd rather have a stop where you make your own stop and you calculate it. Even if it's just for uh, approved changes. Tell me what's approved and then let me decide when and if I'm going to do it. Rather than saying, okay, we're all going to get a break at 15 minutes. Well, it takes a little bit of the strategy out of it, if you it, ask me. It, it does, but also I think part of this is going back to the to the safety aspect of it. If you've got a hot pit. Um, I know from experience when we did first moved up here, um, uh, one of the guys that my wife works with, his cousin was crewing for Larry Gunselman and they needed people. So I went down to Portland and helped with the, on the crew, uh, not more than the gas catch can man and holding the gas can up, but I had a gentleman run into me. I mean, we're sitting there in the quarter mile and I got banged into, you know, very much harder and I'd been pinned against the car. So, you know, that's kind of one of them things. Is it, is it a safety issue or right? Right. I guess it does depend on the racetrack, right? If you've got, because even Portland, okay. Yeah. It probably wasn't set up for that, the, the best, but if you do it like they used to do, people weren't just pitting on that, Part they that you know when the when the feature came out everybody went and picked their spot on the quarter mile so uh, yeah you're right it was crowded <laughs> any way you look at it it was crowded but and we were lucky we had number one pit stall too so <laughs> yeah that and I guess that all makes a difference I don't know I just think I I don't know I just think um like we were talking earlier we were talking about NASCAR and some of that stuff you know and they say well you know they're 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 trying to do something they're they're not made to do. All right. So, <clears throat> yeah, you're probably right. So let's go back to the old school, right? They didn't break it into segments. Now, they certainly could shorten it, and I'd be okay. And and that's the difference. I think my love for short track racing is you got to be all in right now. There yeah. is no tomorrow, right? There's It's today, or and you qualify, and you race on the same day. And this stuff of, and that's one of the things I got against NASCAR is qualifying oils. You know, you run as thin of oil as you possibly can for those laps to go qualify. And the and the back drags and you no, know. no, you get done qualifying, the car goes in, is locked up, and you go racing, and you go racing on that set of tires to start it. 
That's right my on. opinion. And so no no setup stuff, nope. no nothing. Nope. You you put your race stuff on. I don't want to hear I have my qualifying setup on. Sorry. I want to hear we're going racing. This is where I think they've gotten so out of hand in their money because you got uh, the amount of parts you got to carry just to do a the two setups is crazy. It it is. So why? Let's put the race stuff in. This is what you this is what you're going to race on anyway. If you can't be good there, what difference does it make? Right. Boy, amen to that. The loader. Telling it like it is. I love it. <laughs> so, it went Ricky Schlick, your winner. Derek Thorne, second. Carlos Vieira, who, by the way, was fast time. Uh, Chris Eggleson, Craig Rodman. Those two are no strangers to late models. They're Southwest Tour Hall of Famers, more than likely. Jonathan Gomez. Now, I'm not, I know he ran with when it was the Tri-Track Series a couple of years ago. He left for a while. It looks like he's back. If it's the same Jonathan Gomez I'm thinking of, runs pretty good. I don't know if he's out of... Uh, uh, Hermiston or somewhere over in that area. Yakima, I'm not sure. But I think it's over east. Uh, let's see. So, Thorne was second. Vieira third. Eggleston fourth. Rodman fifth. Gomez sixth. Seventh, Eddie McKean, who, by the way, had Preston Peltier helping him uh, doing some dialing for him. Blaine Rocha, eighth. Go Carter, good one. Brooke Schimmel. Way to go, Brooke. Man. And what? And, and did you say she's... Yeah, and she's turning around and uh, she's headed back for next Saturday night. She's racing in uh, Hickory, North Carolina. Dude. She just came from Hickory, raced this race, turned around and is going back to Hickory. Dude, how cool would that be? Oh, my gosh. I'd... I huh? think it'd be I think it'd be outstanding. Yeah. You know. You'd have to be out of your tree if that wasn't I mean, you're not a real racer if that doesn't sound good to you. That's a fact. That's all I'm saying. Dylan Caldwell, tenth. Zamora, eleventh. I guess she was as high as sixth, broke an axle. They came in, replaced the axle, and she still finishes one out of the top ten. That's that's impressive. And they say that may be enough. For her to retain the point lead going in to the final event at Wenatchee. Now, I'm just going to say. <clears throat> You're going out on a limb? No. Okay. Because I never went out on a limb. I said. I did say. You're going out on a limb? <laughs> nope. She is the real deal. And she is going to win some races. And she could. I mean, and, and, I mean. She's as good as anything out there. Yeah, I agree. And it doesn't, you know, and, and the thing that impresses me about her and that whole team, it don't matter where they go. They're fast. Mm -hmm. And they're not lost. I mean, they, you know, like you were, I think we were talking about the other night. It's like, how do you go to a track and how do you dial in? Does it take you all day or are you close enough and you've got a handle on things. You've got a good baseline where, you know, it should be if you got it's just some minor yeah, changes, if, right? If you, I mean, if you've got your baseline and it's and it works with that car, it should be minor changes. And it's it and, and your baseline is solid. Yeah. It shouldn't be I got this this sink's going on this corner, I'm putting a bathtub in the right rear. Uh, no, no. You should be able to we're doing a spring, spring, right. shock, shock. Right. It, the car should pretty much after a couple of sessions. I, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I'm, but you know, but then again, you start thinking about how the, I mean, look at these shock packages oh, around. Right it's insane. Yeah. I mean, you got to be a scientist just to know that. So, I mean, uh, but see, that's where they rely on their shock guy. That guy, when they send them them packages, this is what you're going to do. And you don't mix them packages up. Those are, you got your right, your left, your front. And I, that's the way it is. If you mix them up, they don't. They don't even want to talk to you. We've got a couple of them on the dirt that are that way. 
They sent their socks back. This is what you do. This is where you put them. This is how you do them. Don't mess them up. Because if you start start adding combinations in, I can't guarantee you what they're going to do. Wow. Boom. Wow. Yeah, so, you, 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 I mean, it's come a long ways yeah. from when we were doing it. I mean, even then, I think that's when shocks were just, uh, you had the remote reservoirs, and you could rebuild them. We were, but 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 they were still in the weren't we doing the Monroe air well, shocks? No, but they no, we were running the AFCO <laughs> stuff. We were just running steel shocks. We didn't have anything adjustable. So, but what I'm saying is, they were still the the hot ticket was the double adjustable, yeah. you know, rebound compression deal. You know, uh, the AFCO stuff. So they've come a long way. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, right they're, now we're talking air springs, or whatever. So just. So just Zamora breaking an axle, coming back, fixing that thing, finishing uh, a, a 11th. Enough to retain the point. I mean, where do, to me, well, it doesn't solidify it because you, you never know, but that team's ready to win. Oh, yeah, very much Right, so. you know what I mean? I thought that at the first race of an anti. My God, you go to the back twice and still get to the front? Right. I was just, I was blown away by it. Right. My my most, my my biggest thing, my biggest thing with the whole Zamora team is, uh, number one, my hat's off to Mike Zamora. Right? I mean, I, I you know, I, I've never seen him race. I've heard good things, but I've never seen him race. But that guy, he understands this bump stop stuff. I mean, you know, it's like you said, you, you go, wow, the back to the front twice, right? A- against, I mean, there wasn't junk there, man. No. You know, and, and she has been doing this all year long, track after track. Roseburg, she's never seen. Meridian, she's never seen, I don't think. Uh, down here, I'm sure she's never seen. To have a team that can have a car that's, that good everywhere. I mean, that's you don't see that too often. No, you know, and I like I say, I mean, look at Evans. As good as they are, yeah. I don't know that they've had that good of a car everywhere. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I'm just saying, and, and you know, and but that that comes back down to two things, like we just said, baseline and doing your homework. Gosh. Will you repeat that? Doing your homework. And? Baseline. Yeah. So many of these guys don't have anything. I don't know that, you know. Now, I can't speak for the late mall guys, but I don't know. But even some of the mini stock guys, I, I you know you know why? Uh, why I don't want to even get into that. We'll get into that next week because I'm going to be up at South Sound doing the mini stock championship. Keep rolling. So we got to, uh, we're, we're going. We're going. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, let's see here. Gomez, 6th. 7th, Eddie McKean. 8th, Blaine Rocher. 9th, Brooks Schrimmel. 10th, Dylan Caldwell. 11th was Zamora. Uh, 12th was John Newhouse. 13th, Jan Evans. Not bad. Should they be higher than that? Or is that experience? I think that's experience. I I, I, agree. I would have I to mean, agree. I you, you, and you get, and the only way to get it is to go do it. 14th, Scott Chan, uh, Sanchez. 15th, we talked about this before the show, Ed Thompson. You got to love this guy. Exactly. Low dollar, low budget. And out having some fun. And doesn't, yeah, just loves to be in the car. I love it. Good for Ed Thompson. Eric Schmidt had a pretty bad fire, it sounds like. Yeah. Another, what we're just saying, you never, I think you said it, you just Never know. That's it. Seventeenth, Keith Spangler. Eighteenth, Mitch Klein, the wild one. Nineteenth, John Dillon. Do you believe that back in the day, when they allowed when when he came out and they had the first uh, the um, debt acquisition hooked up, John Dillon was the guy. He won thirteen out of fifteen tour races. Wow. Right? Wow. Yeah, I know. He said, wow. 
Bobby Hodges was 20th. 21st was uh, Dominic Urchetta. Urchetta? He was, uh, what, what, what was he? He was, uh, he was third quick. But he got tangled up. He was running fifth, I think. Uh, cut a tire. Oh, or... that's right. Cut a tire. And then. Got tangled up and ended his day. Tough break. And Jacob Gomes was 22nd. South Sound. We got five minutes. We're good. South Sound. Um, Kevin Barrera and Kyle Long. I don't know. Right? We talked about this, too, before the show. I don't know who's driving the car. There was three names on it. Take your pick. However, there was Anthony. There was Carver. There Was it Anthony Carver? Is it, I don't know. So, Kyle Long, Kevin Barrera. Barrera was first. Kyle Long, second. Um, Greg Davidson, third. Fourth was Sean Jones, fifth. Charles Meter, sixth. Uh, Craig Fander, seventh. Max Schroeder. Good run for Schroeder Motorsports, huh? Yeah. Top 10. Good stuff. Eric Lee, 8th, ninth. Larry Lesmanis, and Jake Nicano. Top 10. Um, can anybody beat Devin West in a legend car? Well, he did get beat on Saturday night. He was finished third Saturday. Oh, night. okay. So I stand corrected. But he's tough. No, he's tough. He wins. Uh, William Plybon second. Caden Anderson third. Mister Excitement. Yeah. I watched him as a quarter minute. That's what I gave him. Mister Excitement. This kid was, whoo! I mean, exciting. Little little side note on that. Uh, on Thursday, he had to have a procedure done. Uh, to figure out, as he puts it, my lung and heart, blood pressure. And so, and if I understand this right, he'd had cancer at one time. I can't find the total article anymore. I'd seen it. And so he had to have this procedure done. Everything was a success, but he was very sore. And then yet they travel over here and he races for two nights. Maybe that's the best therapy. I don't know. But that's well, what, yeah, good point there. You know, getting back in my car is. It is well, well, think about it, Jeff. Oh, yeah. I mean, anymore, it's, uh, you know, as much as maybe we get on the show and we're like, oh, once the show hits, right? It's, yeah, you, it's, it's therapy. It's cool. We love it. That's why we do it. A year ago, you couldn't have got me to talk. Yeah. Now I don't shut up. <laughs> Well, I got the same problem, so it's good. You're learn you're you're you're, you're learning. <laughs> um so good stuff, South hey, Sound. Go ahead. I'd like to put a little plug in here for some good friends of ours. Okay. Got uh, Matt Fontaine from Tees and Tops. He's gonna be doing the shirts for the UAS race down in Phoenix, Arizona. Phoenix, Arizona. And guess what? What? First edition. NWRR shirts are being done by Tees and Tops. Well, all right. Yeah, dude. Thank you, Mr. Fonte. Yeah, absolutely. So stay tuned. This is going to be the uh, first of probably uh, maybe two or three. Um, what was the word I was looking for? Uh, edition. Edition. We'll come out with a second edition and a third edition. And and you guys, uh, go to www.bulldogshirt.com and see what he's got. Use him, folks, and tell him you heard it here. Absolutely, Jeff. Good stuff. I love new sponsors. That's always cool. Uh, Evergreen. Toby Jenkins was the Hornets. Pro Trucks went to Matt Green. Street Stocks went to Roger Drake, the veteran. Uh, vintage, Devin Ironman. We've been talking a lot about him. Uh, Dario Reddick wins the Youth Hornet. Late models. I hate to tell you this, but Dan Moore's your winner. And yeah. Yes, Daniel Moore. I'm saying, who is this guy? Who is this guy? Daniel Moore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but who is this guy? He beats Donnie Winnott, Mike Holden, Trenton Moriarty, and Garrett Archer. That's four pretty 
good studs right there. Yeah, exactly. I have no idea who Daniel Moore is. I do I do now. So we're going to see what's going on here. Herschel McGriff, we're going to try to get him here. Yak at him. I'm excited for this. Yeah, it should be cool. Okay, here we go. Hello? Jer, hang tight, buddy. How you doing? I'm not hearing you. Yeah, hang on. And people of interest in the motorsports world, it's time for In the Seat, powered by Blue Line Graphics. All right, our guest tonight, everybody, he's, uh, he's, we, we, we joked about at the start of the show. You there? He's one of two, yeah. Can you hear me, Jr.? I can hear you, but you sound like you're in the back of the room. I do, because I got, yeah, because we're on uh my cell so we're on we got you on a mixer but so okay, we're the we're having a little actually having a little party here at the house <laughs> and uh and we, what do we look at what do we look at on like on the internet thing or to get to your station you go to terrybridgesracing.com terrybridgesracing.com and then you go um and then there'll be a page there and you just go to the listen live page and you'll be able to have it on there'll be a page there and you go to the listen live, live page where yep so who's there with you? Warren there with you today? Nope. My good friend Jeff Eden, he helps me on my uh, other Northwest Race Report show. So uh-huh. he's a, he's super excited. He was saying he was super excited to uh, find out more about you and stuff. So let's let's quickly. The good or the bad? Well, the good, Jr. You know that. I would never. <laughs> well, unless you've got some really good dirt you want to spread around, and then yeah. I could do that. Uh, we could probably stir up something. <laughs> I like you already. <laughs> So let's start from the beginning. When did you when did you jump into that Chevelle, that sixty six Chevelle? What year was that? I was uh I was sixteen years I think I was sixteen years old. Okay. But I was a uh, uh what a sophomore in high school. Wow. And that and that was the first car that I that's the first car we had. My brother was driving uh I think he had the Dodge and my dad had uh uh, the Oli car. I'm not sure which. I think it was the Oli car then. I think it was the and Nova, maybe. It probably was because all I remember is we got it ready. I got no practice, and the three of us went out on the racetrack, and it was we were all there just for qualifying, and they let all three of us go out there to they and I followed them. I got no practice at all. It was uh, and the three of them, the three of us ran around there for I remember I don't know, twenty for about twenty minutes. And I had more tire marks on the car before I even raced it the first time than I did the whole year. <laughs> so yeah, I'll but... never, I'll never forget that. And then, <laughs> but uh, I don't know where did somebody come up with that picture. There's a picture on Facebook of me in the 1974. Uh, that was we were running the Canadian 200 at, at uh, Victoria, BC. Yeah, and, and your and uh, your Chevelle. Yeah, yeah, and 66, and yeah, we used to call my dad the. The king and uh, Doug was a prince, and I was the duke. <laughs> <laughs> I, I never and knew then, that. Yeah, and then when we went to then when we went up to Canada to Langley and all that stuff, they called us the Bulldogs because when somebody got picked on, the other two would get them. The Bulldogs. Well, I never. That's yeah, awesome. Yeah, yeah, there was a lot of there was a lot of we had a lot of fun back then. We, you and know, was, Jr. Did you did you grasp at all? just how awesome your dad was i mean did, did, no, he, was did just, he was just dad to me really yeah, yeah. i i, I guess we take we take that for and, granted don't we a little bit yeah. maybe you know and another thing is really odd everybody thinks he i mean he absolutely knows nothing about race cars which is be which is really odd for somebody that's done it for so many years um he had, you put a phillips screwdriver and a crescent wrench in his hand and he's confused um <laughs> He absolutely no. He has no mechanical, no mechanical ability at all. But he could come in and tell you what the car is doing, but he can't tell you how to fix it. So he always had to have a lot of crew guys around, and you know to, that were pretty savvy. You know when I was growing up, and that's how I learned. 
you know. And then when I was a little kid, I used to hang out. We used to go to the – used to do a lot of racing back east with the Petties. And I got to hang out with Kyle all the time when we were 10 years old, you know, 10, 15 years, 10, 12, 14 years old. And, uh, you know, and that's how you learn. That's how you pick up all this stuff that goes on, you know, as far as how to build these cars. And I just I just remember being in everybody's face all the time, learning how to build stuff, you know. And and I didn't, you know, and when I was building the cars, uh, when I was building the stuff, I didn't, you know, because, you know, it wasn't handed to me. I had to work for it. You know who one of the guys that helped me the most when I was a, when I uh, had that car was Bud Hickey. You remember him? I do remember him. Bud Hickey, car fifteen. He owned the taverns up there, and uh, and he would you know slip me five hundred bucks now and then. Five hundred bucks then was like getting you know five grand now. You know? Oh yeah, uh, dude. You could buy a lot of stuff, and then all the wrecking yards and stuff. Dwayne Ray, uh, you know, uh, he was a big supporter of mine course i went to school with his daughter too we were the same age so that helps so uh, other than that it was yeah. so we had a lot of fun i mean but that was good you know it was a lot of good racing then and we'd run i mean back then my dad run 75 80 races a year you know with the west and the late models and and uh you know i mean we were running dirt we were racing uh dirt on friday night somewhere and saturday night we were running yakima or monroe with the same car same tires, same car rear, same everything. Jeez, isn't yeah. that crazy? And I'm sure you remember that because uh, yeah, you were around. Well, I, I, well, I remember. I remember seeing a, a a picture of it wasn't, or maybe it was your dad. He was just out of the picture, but they had a picture of Eaton. I think it was uh, Fuge that had it, and it showed him on dirt at Skagit. Yeah, yep, dude, that's yeah. awesome. I mean that that's that's before I mean that's way before I ever knew what a dirt car was. But. I remember uh, back in about nineteen, I was about uh, twelve, eleven. I was about eleven or twelve years old, and Bud and my dad and they were running a big race up at Skagit. And Bud, I don't know if you remember this. Bud had a big bus, great big bus. They cut the end of it off on the one end and they drove the race car right up inside of it. And it wasn't a hillbilly looking bus. I mean, it was a nice looking piece. And it had six bunks in it. And uh, anyway, I used to go to the races with him all the time. And and my dad had won. Bud got second. And the car was up on the front stretch. Well, then all the people came down, and they were all drinking in the pits. And Bud told me to go over and get his race car. Well, I don't know if you remember. Bud's about six four five, And I'm 11 years old and three foot nine or whatever I am. <laughs> and, and he told me to go get the car. And so I got the car. And I got in there, and I got the thing started and laid down and got the clutch out. And I started driving around the track. He told me to go get it and bring it to the back of the truck with a hauler. Well, I was going the wrong way around the track for one, and I was going around. And I just kept putting my hand out, you know, one more lap. And I did, and Bud says I probably did twenty laps. In there. <laughs> Dude, going the wrong, so going awesome. the wrong, going the wrong oh, way. Yeah, oh, it was funny because I, I remember I could barely see over the steering wheel, you know, and I, and I was sitting on one leg and driving with my uh, right leg all stretched out, you know, and it had a stick and everything. In it, but then uh, then the official can't or the promoter comes screaming out of the grandstands and cussing and bud went over there and about knocked him out because he was cussing because there was women around and uh and it was funny because i was at uh wayne rigdon's funeral about two weeks ago and he he brought that story up at the funeral and uh dude that's that was, uh, so cool uh, yeah I, it was good old times well you yeah. know what's funny is is you say you held your hand up with one more right yeah, I'd stick the, my finger out the window. One yeah, more lap, one more lap, and Bud's well, well, Bud stick his beer can up in the air. Go for it. You well, well, you know what? It, that's what they used to do, right? When they come out for qualifying, they used to come out and they put the two up or the one up. You know, tell them how many how many warm up laps they wanted. Yeah, and, and they yeah, used to go yeah, out. Yeah, 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 was, yeah not no more. Not, not, yeah, either. no way. But that, you I know, mean, that's, that's funny you say that because um, I remember when I was trying things at Portland, and it'd be twenty of us out there practicing. And I'd stick one or two or three fingers out my window or up against my dash. And you know who I was saying? It was Dave Nass. Yes. Know? Yes, I do, yeah. man. The best flagger ever. Yeah, yeah he was. He was uh, He was a great guy. Great guy. Yeah. But, he uh, was a he was a flagger, man. He always had those Hawaiian print shirts on, man. Dude oh, was yeah. the, the white pants, the big bell bottoms. He was the bomb, dude. Yeah, he was. You're right. That was when we all had to wear white pants, yep. which I thought was crazy. But you know, but you look that, at it now, you look at it now, and you go, man, that was so cool. I know it. I, know I mean, it. I miss that stuff. I I think they, I you know, now you got blue. That was just part of the deal. 
you well, know? And, and Yeah, we had to – I'll never forget that because uh, Levi or the white pants only lasted me probably yeah, a couple of months, you know, because I had a lot of pairs of them because you just destroy them, you know, when you're in – you know, how do you not hurt them? You know, right, stand right. Them up, so, but yeah, you got so many but, people in the pits now wandering around. I just, I was down at uh, Gray's Harbor last night at a sprint car race, and uh, there's people wandering around down there that don't have a clue what's going on. Those guys come flying off the track. Oh, I know. It's and, they, and they don't pay attention. No, and, but you can't see them because they're all in dark clothes. Yeah, you know, you're it's right. it's crazy. Well, you know, it, right. that's just part of the tradition, though. That should be. White pants should be, you know, mandatory. I know it. So, man, you know, like I, it's funny. We were all talking in the pits Saturday night. Uh, we raced the modified Saturday night. Uh, the guy I take care of, and and there's, I mean, there's, there was little baby, you know, little what three to six year old kids all up and down all the pits, and they're all enjoying themselves. And I mean, it, now it's a lot easier for the families to get involved because they can bring the kids in now. You don't have to, have, you know. Um, you know, right. like NASCAR, the way it was. I mean, NASCAR just started doing that what ten years ago, where they allowed the the wives and the the babies and stuff in the right hot pits and all this stuff. You know, before the race. Well, and you almost have to now, right? I mean, I don't, I don't yeah. think you could get away with with that. I mean, that'd be awful uh, hard. But I know. Well, a lot of them probably wouldn't be able to race. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. That, that that's right. That's right. Uh, well, they tout uh, themselves as a family oriented sport. Yes, they do. So let yeah. me let me ask you. Let me ask you. I mean, because there's there's been a lot of talk going up and down. You know, everybody's going, man. We got this series. We got that series. We got this. We got that. What what's going on with late model racing that you see? I mean, if you if somebody said, Jr. Look, man, fix it. Well, it's funny you say that because we've been talking about that the last few days. The the problem is the you know the the tires are getting way out of hand, the tire bills. Uh, and a lot of people just don't have the sponsor to pay for that. You know, and you go, you get four new tires that's 600 bucks, 150 bucks a pop, hundred dollars worth of fuel. I mean, you got a thousand bucks to run your car that night and they pay seven fifty to win. And that's if you don't uh, tear nothing up. Right. And that's if you don't tear nothing up. Exactly. So, I mean, it's, you know, it's, um, uh, and they pay seven fifty to win. How does that? Yeah, and, how, and I and you know this. I used to get seven fifty or a thousand back in uh, eighty eight and ninety with my late models. You know, and, I was getting a thousand bucks to win at Portland. We were and, and uh, seven fifty per second, and uh, you know, with a car that was worth half as much as what these are now. Exactly, and I was but, talking. You know, it's just it's just the way it is. Nothing you can do about it. But well, it was. I, talking know, I think with... so, you know. I don't know. Uh, you know about. I don't know what to say to fix it other than. Hope it'd be nice if the promoters could all get together and everybody kind of run the same kind of rules. Then you can travel around, but nobody will do that. We were and uh, you know they've done really well here at Tucson. We got the from what I understand, we got the best car count, you know, in the in the in the nation at, at Tucson right now. And uh, because you know they've set some rules and people come here, uh, they know what the rules are when they. A lot of people come from Vegas now. And run our uh, modifieds and stuff, you know, and and it's right in the rules, you know. If you don't have this done, you get DQ'd, and and they'll talk about different things in the drivers' meeting. Make sure this is on the car, or whatever. If it's not, we're sorry, you know. And uh, in the modified class, one of them got DQ'd for second Saturday night because he didn't have his front tape spring, or his front springs taped. And they said it big and clear in the drivers' meeting, you know, and it says it in the rules. They make you put a piece of tape on the front coils. To uh, keep the hat from backing off? No, no, to make sure you're not coil binding. Oh. Because we used, to, we used to have bump stops in it, and a lot of the guys didn't understand it, didn't know how to do it. And it's too bad because it was easier with the bump stops than it is with the conventional spring now. Uh, but is what it is. So we couldn't bump stop it. So you had to run up and down. Well, then, you know, that was no big deal. I'll just coil bind it, you know, which is like a bump stop. Well, then they wouldn't let us do that. So to show us, so to prove that you're not coil binding, you have to put a piece of duct tape around each one of the coils. And then when you go through the top five, go through tech, if that tape is ground down, you know, cause it'll squeeze it. It'll, it'll, you know, right. It'll, it'll rub, right. Up. Right. Then they know you're coil binding and you're DQ. So, uh, you know, it's just, you know, it's just, it's just little things like that, that you got to deal with, but still be fast, you know? And, uh, well, I think you said it best when you said, you know, 
ever we were talking about this before the show Jeff brought this up you know it was just a matter of nobody everybody's greedy they want they want everybody and rather than just taking your turn all the rules are different so you can go 50 miles up this way and the stinking rules are just enough different that it's a pain in the ass to go switching everything yeah i know it you're right i know you know and yeah and you know cuz everybody's got different tire rules uh the weight the weight's different and now there's so many different motors with the crate motor stuff going on and open motors and so what they do if you if 10 cars show up at our racetrack because uh, they cut it off at four o'clock. You, you cannot have your motor pumped up for four o'clock. Otherwise, it's just they're too busy because all the all the racing starts. Um, you got to come there and they pump and whistle your motor, and then they tell you what it's got away, and left side weight, and that's what. And you buy our tires and you can race. And everybody's been doing that. And uh, um, they they have figured it out with I don't know how many motor packs. Three, four different motor packages and which is pretty tough to do at one in one track you know one race boy and, and that's all uh, in the same class they got four different yeah they'd be, yeah, be in the same class yeah they're running 604 yeah. you know open. like in the late models and in the modifieds um so you have four different styles you know the 602s 604s open motors two barrels four barrels yeah well that so, makes i guess that makes some good for some good fields i mean running together yeah. like that even though they're not all the same right but yeah and then i you know then i sent you some pictures of the yes. you know, of the of the wedge car that's what i wanted to talk to you about so what tell us what that is tell us what that's okay. all about first of all you got to think of the people in the grandstands eight out of ten people in the grandstands don't have a clue what the difference is between a super late model and a late model a late model is a big spring car with the sh with the shock external from the spring, like a five inch spring, and the coil and uh, and then the coilover car is obviously a coilover shock in the middle with a coil spring over the top. And that's a super uh, late model. And that's a super late model. But the problem is, you know, the the late models used to kind of have the metal bodies and kind of were staying to the old school. Well, now all the late models are running super late model bodies. You know, the five star bodies. They do not look any different. The only thing different, the definite difference between our two is the late models are on an eight inch tire and we're on a, and, and the, what's it, and five inch springs. And then the supers are coil over cars with, uh, um, you know, 10 inch tires and they're, and they're on bump stops. Most everybody's on bumps on the supers. Is, is the bump stop, is it easier to understand than the conventional thing? I mean, well, I, I look at how you set well, it no, up, and I'm know, scratching my head, and I'm going, "How is this?" Let me tell you, you know, because I worked with uh, I and I my, myself and Mariah worked with Ron Eaton for a month down here a few months, uh, two or three months ago, and we went out there and practiced for days and days. And Mariah was driving, and Ron and I were doing the car, and he was learning this bump stuff that you know that he's doing up there. But we tried tons of stuff here, and you know during the week, and uh, but. You know, once you get it figured out, it's not bad. It's tough. When in the modified, man, we had that figured out in the modifieds. Uh, two years ago, we won what twenty-one out of twenty-four races in the modified class. Wow! And it and the other ones, we were in the fence. So, you know, <laughs> uh, but you know, and I, we figured it out. You know, and I had to do very little adjustment to that throughout the night compared to what you have, you know, with the big spring stuff, where you have to actually run a conventional spring because the weather changes. You know. Well, so and, uh, what's the secret behind this bump thing? I mean, I know you can't give away your secret, but I mean, just in a well, general just, sense, you know, you're, run, what is you're it? running off the tire. It's like a go, it's like a big go kart. And you know, Jason's really good at this stuff. You know, the kid, and uh, you know, it's just you really got to work at it. You know, there's a lot of work. You got to do a lot of testing. You know, and then you got the guys that just go out and race, and they never, they don't take their car out of the trailer until Friday night when you know. They don't do any maintenance on them and stuff. And you just, you know, we practice. We got lots of laps in. Um, we do a lot of practice. But the, the deal with the wedge car, the promoter here probably six months ago, yeah. it was January. He he wanted to make a change in the late models. And so he, he, he asked everybody in the driver's meeting or the first tech meeting we had at the start of the year, what do you guys think about these wedge cars? And guys thought they were cool, but you know, a lot of guys don't have the money to do it. 
but he would say just do it throughout the year when you wad your carp or your record or something, you know, then that's when you maybe it's like a four year program to change the body, you know, starting the first of this next year. And because you can buy these bodies for less than half of what a five star body weighs. Right. 700, 750 bucks. Well, can't you? And now are these cars? But then you, but, but you can buy it. But right. But could you, you build the doors? One, then you can, could then you, you can build your own. Could you build the doors like we used to do on the dirt? Remember how, we, you know, well, I could build it. We could build everything. We can build it because they use a five star roof. And it looks like an airplane. It looks like an airplane roof. You know, it's real round and eight inch spoiler. But you can build everything. You know, once you buy a body, then you could just build your own parts. You know, because it's all pretty, pretty simple. And uh, and well, what are the and what's a body go for? What's that? What's a body go for? Fifteen hundred bucks? No, uh, seven hundred fifty dollars for a wedge body. Jeez, who wouldn't do that? Yeah, and that what they are seven hundred. Yeah, they're seven hundred fifty bucks back east. And they run these at Berlin and uh, yeah. uh, Muskegon, uh, I mean, all over the east. Yeah, coast. they're they're killer, and they're and they look and, like an open comp car in a way. Yeah, yeah, and the you know keep the tires inside the body a little bit so you can uh, you know rub up and down each other and stuff and just. But anyway, that's what he's trying to get the late model guys to do is change their car over this. So there's a difference between the late models and the super lates. So it looks like you're running a totally different class of cars. Which is a Cause, smart idea. Because nine times, because nine times out of ten, they don't run the two classes the same night, because it looks because it looks like you're, you know, running the same kind of cars in two different series, you know, two different. Uh, and, and like I say, a lot of people don't understand it, you know, what the difference is. Wow. So yeah, so that's why they're doing that, and so. So uh, you're making all the rules. You're doing everything. Now. I'm not making the rules. No, no, no. No, you're just doing the body. No, I, the I, body I like rules. to make the rules. I love to make the rules. <laughs> yeah, of course it'll be legal, you know. And uh, but anyway, uh, one of the last year's track champion, Brandon Schilling, is uh, and John, the promoter, he owns both the chassis. Uh, John actually purchased uh, Mariah's old chassis because uh, Ron Eaton bought Mariah a new state of the art um, Port City bump stick chassis uh, a couple months ago just the chassis and then we had to put all the parts and we couldn't use any of the suspension parts off of our old car on it except for the quick change center section that was it and the wow. hubs and the brakes were you drooling and, on were you drooling on this car oh it's a nice piece is it's it a real nice piece oh it's be- absolutely gorgeous oh. and uh so anyway so we had the old chassis here and john talked to me about it and uh so anyway he ended up purchasing it and then he uh uh he bought three of these bodies and Brandon got one and I got one. And then we're both going to, we're both going to build these two cars. And, uh, the tech director is they've come up with some rules. He's talked to the, he's talked to the people back East that build these bodies and build these cars. So they know, you know, not put too many rules on. Otherwise it just gets out of hand. Right. So it has a deck, a deck width rule, uh, rear spoiler height rule from the base, uh, you know, and uh, roof height, uh, window opening hole. You know, because remember how we used to make the yep. window openings? You had to slow it through like a snake. Yeah. And uh, anyway, there's probably six measurements that you that you have that's uh, that everybody has to stick by. Then it doesn't get out of hand. Right. Because you know how it is. Yes, I and do. You only allow so much rake from the center of the front wheel to the base of the spoiler. Uh, and that's you know we're basing it kind of off a of four inch frame height because. You, because these cars cannot run on bumps and uh, can't coil bind them, so they got to be a four inch ride height, basically. Pretty much. Well, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, because yeah, we have to go through a bump stick, you know, underneath the chassis going through tech. So, mm-hmm. but you know, you can run real soft springs and whatever, and figure it out to where you know you got it right on the ground. Because, but yeah, he wants these bodies on the ground. I mean, the frame can be at four inches, but the body can be at three. Oh, crap. as long as you're not sparking the, you know, you can't be sparking on the racetrack. Right. You can run, run the skirts right on the ground. Jeez. And uh, so it'll be, I'm really looking forward to that. So now uh, we're going to, we're going to debut them on the 28th of uh, October. They gave us a few more weeks, a couple, three weeks more, because they originally wanted these done in three weeks. And uh, I just got the chassis. I just got it sandblasted uh, two days ago in the shop here. And I still got to, you know, put a crate motor in it and do all, you know, build the whole thing. 
and then take it all back apart and powder coat it and uh, do the body and all that stuff. So, Jeez. so we're looking forward to it. And uh, what we're going to do, we're just going to run an exhibition there. We're going to run an exhibition race on the 28th, the two of us, just to show everybody and, uh, you know, and, and, and advertise the car and then put it up on the, behind the grandstand so people can look at them and uh, it'll look like they're late eighties and early nineties, you know, with these cars, but a lot more, a lot better technology now than we had then. Oh, dude, they'll be, they'll be sweet. So I, I want to ask you, you know, your, your time in the dirt, what, what did, did it teach you anything? You know, the biggest problem I had with that was I didn't, you know, I had big Russ helping me and, uh, but I couldn't get, you know, he was good, but with those cars, they were so wild, 900 something horsepower, you know how they were. You know, I led, I don't know how many races I led, and then they'd have a yellow with five laps to go, and I couldn't, I couldn't get, I couldn't do anything, and I ended up third, you know, it, because the track would change. I didn't have a good, you know, I needed a crew chief that could, that could really read the dirt and help me with adjustments, because I wasn't, you know, I had a hard time with the dirt, and when it was, when it was tacky i had no problem figuring it out you know and we were doing wheel stands down the straightaway you know how right were, right so yeah oh yeah, yeah well, what... but i just had a hard time uh you know uh, reading the dirt to make the right adjustments for it and i tried i tried but oh, oh. I, I had a hard time getting help i couldn't get the help well no but i i don't even mean that really i mean because you ran good you always ran good but yeah well i got rides i even got rides back east from uh, you know, Walters gave me a ride when we went to uh, the Have a Tampa shows at uh, Volusia, and then, and then actually, the, and then the same weekend I drove. Uh, oh, the guy that had the flooring company, uh, Frank Saucy. Saucy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He got he got sick. He wasn't feeling good, so he asked me to drive his car. And, oh my goodness, what that was! That uh, you know, Frank's cars, all his stuff was brand new every six months. Right, and it was absolutely a gorgeous piece. And, uh, what a nice piece to drive. So what about but what about driving? Did you was it are the are the same skills needed on the dirt? As I mean, is no, it, not it, even close. For me, it wasn't even close. I mean, you got to. I mean, the dirt you got to finesse it. I mean, you but you're slinging and flying under, flinging it around, doing all the pavement the way these cars are now. It's uh, you really got to finesse these cars now. And uh, I didn't. I don't. It, I don't. It didn't help me for my pavement deal, but it was you know, like a big oversized go-kart to me. Cause I ran a lot of dirt track, dirt racing with go-karts and stuff with twin engines and stuff before I even ran that dirt cart. Right. You know, we were running, we were doing that for fun, you know, with Ray Knight and all them guys up there. And, yeah. And foul was up there yeah. and all them guys. And, and we all grew up together and, you know, 50 of us show up at a dirt track, you know, with twins and I had twin one thirty five open motors on mine. Dude, it's not, it, it, it's insanity, isn't it? Oh, it's crazy, but we had an absolute ball. When you got done, your arms felt like an orangutan, you know, because your arms, you couldn't hardly hang on to them. <laughs> so, hey, I got a question for you in all of this. is the Has the crate motor been good for uh, racing? The crate motor? Yes. Well, yeah. you're asking a guy that's never had one until this year, because uh, Mariah's running... She was running four classes this year, a uh, super late, a uh, late model, a pro truck, and a pro stock. And the pro stock is pretty much like the, what the street stocks used to be at Portland. And they were fast, the, the metal body cars yes, on eight-inch tires. And we actually own the pro stock that we have now. And Mariah, a year ago, she bought a dirt car over in Bakersfield. Her and Jason wanted to go dirt race. And she bought it with her own money. She bought a, a modified uh and uh and then everything kind of fell apart around here with the, the modifieds in the dirt you know with the tracks and we really didn't have time because she's going to school becoming a nurse and college and all that stuff but it, it came with a crate motor and it was fairly new so we've had that in the shop and so that's what we ended up putting in our, our pro stock you know what a low maintenance it's a low maintenance deal um uh, you know, compared to what and so we're running Tony Oda Motors in our super late, which I've known Tony for many years. And, uh, but, you know, you got to freshen them things up after every 15, you know, 15 races, 20 races. Yeah. And then the basic, you know, I don't know what costs, the crate you know, motor that's is. expensive. What it is down and, there. You know, here you got, you know, you got eight to 12,000 bucks to freshen it if nothing's wrong with it. Yeah. But what happens with 
like with the crates are they rebuildable down there as long as they're yeah, being yeah. Rest- actually uh they're looking they're yeah they uh i don't know all the specifics on it but they are looking for places to different engine shops that can take care of that that so, would be honest to, yeah. if there's 10 guys in there they all get the same thing you, you just hit the whole key because that's here, a whole key right there because you get one guy that's a week you know, we have a couple of them running out at yeah. uh, Grays harbor with sealed crate motors and i'll tell you what if it's a crate motor uh yeah it isn't yeah and you know it, yeah but um our tech guys stay kind of they stay up on that pretty good as far as you know staying with the you know Staying in touch with the uh, engine builders and making sure everything's done right. Well, that's that's good because so, up here it's not. So you you would say the crate motor then has been good for the sport? Yeah, I th- it, I think it has. You know, because if we had to do it again, I I would probably get one. That's probably what you know. Maybe that's probably what I would do. I don't know. You know, I, I, of, I know. I, I hear you. Plus they get the weight. Plus they get the weight brakes and the spoilers and all the other. Happy no, years. no, we all run the same spoilers. The only wow. the only difference between a crate motor and our open motors here is weight. We all run a five inch. We all run the same uh, five star spoiler. Yeah. Well, see here, so, especially like with the modifieds. The modifieds yeah, here get they a, get fifty pounds. Is that all it is? Crate motor? Yeah, crate motor gets a fifty pound weight right here. Huh. Yeah, the dirt modifieds they get a they get to run a spoiler plus the weight break and yeah yeah no it's everybody runs the same size spoiler on the modifies and and left side weight and all that they just get 50 pounds which 50 pounds is big here at tucson because this track is so abrasive it tears up the tires really bad and you you put 50 pounds in the middle of the car that's just that much more weight uh you know, no, you no, know no, one who's really fine. one who's really anal with that stuff is ronnie man when i worked with him all this summer i mean uh, we worked side by side for months you know because because when he raced down here, I would take care of uh, I and Mariah took care of him. And uh, there is nobody that works as hard as he does. He's 74 years old. And he could have a perfect race car, broke, break the track record, do all that, and he's still there changing springs. Because I, <laughs> I think I can go faster. Just, <laughs> so, sounds, like Tom, sounds like Tom Sweatman. He's, you know? he's changing springs before he goes out to hot lap. And, oh, he does. I, I've I, never I, changed so many springs in my life. I, I, I laughed at Tom. I said, what are you trying to do, win hot laps? <laughs> Yeah, it's crazy. So, well, hey man, but, what's what's next for what's next for you? I I hear you you, you say you got a ride next year. Actually, John, yeah, that owns it bought Mariah's car. We're gonna put the body on and do all that, build the car, and then I get to drive it. So yeah, I guess I'm coming out of retirement, I guess. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. So, what, uh oh, uh oh. So what about your dad? How's he doing? He's doing really good. He'll be ninety in December, and. Uh, Will he ever get in a uh, car again? Well, you know, uh, when the Canyon was here in May, Bill Nat Bill McAnally talked to me about putting him in a car when he was ninety because he knew that Roger Pinsky was maybe thinking of giving him a car to run somewhere or doing something. But McAnally had done a lot of things with my a lot of racing with my dad back in the nineties and early two thousand with Brendan Gone and my dad, and he wanted to be the guy to put him in a car. So we talked about it down here, but you know most of my dad's friends and families and all that stuff is in Oregon, Washington, Canada. So I, I told him, I really thought it should be Monroe because you got a lot of people up in that whole area, all the way from Canada to Oregon and Northern California that are McGriff fans. And they can't, you know, most of them can't travel to Tucson, but you know, they could travel to uh, Washington, to Monroe. So there'll be a lot of, uh, be a lot of wheelchairs and uh, walkers, <laughs> and a lot of walkers and a lot of uh, you know uh, yeah. triple parking uh, at Monroe for that race. So have to uh, yeah. double the handicap yeah. spots. Well, hey, yeah. I, I'm telling you, I, I would be there. So that's going to happen at, right now. It's supposed it's going to happen at Monroe. No, oh, I'm so, there. Uh, I'm so there. So anyway, that's that's pretty cool. That is, uh, that's going to be damn. And cool. all Dad has to do is show up with his helmet, you know, and they'll supply. They supply everything. Well, they better. Yeah. So they better. That's yeah, all I'm you know, saying. Those, things, those cars aren't cheap now. I mean, these no, guys are these cars now. How 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 could that hurt anybody to put Herschel McGriff Senior in a car? Oh, I know. <laughs> Hello. I know. <laughs> you're da- you you're, the... da- you're a damn fool if you don't. Especially if you got yeah. the right advertising going Hell on. Yeah. My God. Good night, yeah. Irene. So it'll be fun. It'll be fun. 
Dude, yes, that's uh, a, that's so awesome. So will we see you up in this neck of the woods? Uh, you definitely will that time, that day. Uh, yeah. You know, I come up, uh, I haven't been up, it's, it's been, uh, well, I was up there about uh, three or four weeks ago, at, you know, for Wayne Rigdon that passed away. He's been a friend of mine. I've known him since I was 10 years old. He was actually Bud Hickey's uh, crew chief. Oh, wow. Back in those days, and that's how I've known him. And, and I used to, uh, I used to go out to his house in uh, St. Helens spend the weekend, go to the dirt races with him and all that stuff. And then they'd bring me home on Sunday night to go to school. And, uh, and it just kind of grew from that. And then, uh, he retired in the nineties, early nineties at the, at the, as a millwright at the paper mill, I believe it was. And, and then he would, he would, he would drive all the way from St. Helens to my shop at JR Industries by the Portland airport about four days a week. And he'd get there about 10 leave at three. He would sell parts for me at the counter, help me build stuff. And he was at Portland Speedway every Friday night with me on my crew. God. Every Friday night he was there. Isn't and that he awesome? Was just, he was just like a, you know, he was just like another dad to me. And he was just a great guy. And then, you know, then he was the, uh, uh, what would you call him? The, I don't know if he was a head tech director. He was the president of the club out there at uh, River City Speedway. Or oh, St. Helens. St. Helens. St. Yep. Helens. Yep. Yep. Remember yep. all his years and and then his wife, uh, Cheryl, had the, all the concession stands. And then he drove around the golf cart. And then when I'd show up, I'd go out there to sell parts or drive somebody's dirt car. But I always brought my big trailer out with parts to sell for people. And, and then Shelby, my dog, would ride around in his golf cart with his sunglasses on all night <laughs> and make feet of ice cream. Dude, that's so, killer, man. Yeah. So that was. Uh, I know. That's what people forget, man. There's, there's, there's so much more that, that racing brings than just just being out on the race. I mean, we all know it's awesome to be in the car and be a part of the crew and uh, all that stuff, but it's that other stuff that you remember too. That's awesome. Uh, it's, you know, cause that's what I did for my business too. I mean, that's what I did every day. I slept it and ate it. You know, it's just what I did. Yeah. And so that's why all these people, I stayed in touch with them every day, almost every day of the week. And, uh, yeah, it's a bummer. It's, I've lost two or three of my major sponsors in the last three years that, you know, helped me out a lot in my eighties and nineties. And, uh, have passed away and it's kind of a fun deal but uh it is what what's your what's your what's your passion like what's your passion level like is it still nine or ten or has it gone down well it kind of did but you know it was really up there with mariah because of all the stuff you know i really you know and she's doing so good in college and everything that i really wanted to make this happen for her you know uh but you know then this you know, and then i got to drive one race last year uh in a late model and uh and i have never driven on bumps myself and i had never been uh never driven a crate motor and it was on eight inch tires i've now, never done either, any one of those three now is that eight inch tire like a comanche or what's it like uh no this tire is a uh what was a it's a tal city eight inch tire so kind of like a, what we used to kind of like what we used to run at tonino only it's an eight inch tire so it was a slick. It wasn't like it's a, a oh yeah, it wasn't a like a Comanche that had the grooves in it and shit. You know, no, remember no, no. that? No, no, this was a slick. Okay, it's it's pretty much a recap. Yeah, and uh, anyway, so I went out and practiced on Friday night uh, with uh, actually the guy that won the championship last year. Last year out here, he had two three cars, and they were running sprint cars with us. And I went out there and I don't know fifteen within fifteen laps, Brandon and I were the quickest cars out there out of all of them and then and then we got rained out and uh -huh. i went back to, i went back the following saturday and started on the front row and i was dead last in three laps whoa yeah i was dead last in three laps. i made the mistake of running the tires too low you know because i just did what i normally would do and we only ran like a, i think it was a 25 or 30 lap race and i was hitting the ground so hard going in the corner i could all i did was go straight so I went clear to the back and then I got mad at myself and I just, I kept it in the wood and only brought it down. I remember the little trick that Ron Eaton told me, he said, you just don't lift and just bring it down with the brain. And I made the car, I'd, I'd slide in the corner so hard. I finally got the tires irritated where they, they built up air pressure in about 10 laps. And I went to the back and when I got, when they got the checker flag, I was hitting the guy in the door and we got the check. Jeez, for the so, win? For the win. Oh, yeah. baby. Look so out. Yeah, so that's that way cool. So that's when it kind of felt better, you know. 
<laughs> well, yeah, they always feel good. Well, you know those yeah. nights, even at Willamette, right? You, you you stomp the throttle coming off a two after the green, and you go either you go this is they're they're in trouble, or you go holy crap, this is gonna be a long night. Oh, I know. You know. You know. It'll be a hero or zero. <laughs> That's it, man. That is so but, it. No, it's uh, that was kind of fun. That kind of brought back some memories, you know. And, uh, because I hadn't been in a car other than I did drive Mariah's one night. Uh, we were having we were having problems with. We had tried everything we could possibly imagine with her car. We were just having handling issues that she was having a hard time with. And uh, so Jason says to me, "Let's put the big boy seat in it." And so, so we did, and we didn't tell nobody. And I went out there, and the promoter was out there, but he uh, it was just Mariah's car. And I went out there and ran real good. I mean, I had never driven a buff stop car, you know, all that. It had been 10 years, and I could not believe it. That car of hers was like being on a rail, absolutely. Like you were on a – just like a railroad all the way around that racetrack. So you were like, What's wrong? You, there ain't nothing wrong with this car. <laughs> and you know what? But that's all she needed, though, because she couldn't get over a – she was just having a hard time. It was because uh, she would, you know, qualify in the in the fifteens, and it was an it was an issue after we had wrecked the, she had wrecked the car, so we were you know trying some different things, and uh, she was having she couldn't get like past a fifteen or sixteen six or something, and so I went out there and I was, and right out of the trailer I did sixteen flat, and you know but but I I could feel some things that she wouldn't understand that I you know it came right and it's like you know you. You know, you quit riding a bicycle for ten years to get back on it. You remember how to ride? Oh yeah. yeah, you don't you don't forget that stuff. So Jason and I made some a lot of little different changes that would you know made the car turn better and all that kind of stuff. And and then she got back in her and boy, she's right back to her game again. You know, that's all she needed to figure it out. You know, that was really good. So I was glad I did it. So that's been in the back of my head. You know, it's, I I do miss that. You know, you I don't miss all, I didn't miss all the work because Portland, man, it was a lot of work. We did a lot of cars back then. You know. Yeah, you did. And, uh, but we're doing, you know, we're doing, uh, you know, the, a lot of the fast modifieds and stuff down here, helping them and, you know, doing things to them. But, uh, so how many cars you work on, would you say during a week? I mean, does it, I know it varies, well, it depends it, on it, if they it crash, varies, but it depends on the wrecks, but you know, we've, we've, uh, there's like five of the modifieds out there that we've, you know, gone through and, and they're all running. And I think, uh, I think Shelly and I were talking top five, uh, well, I had four of the top five cars last night, wow. or Saturday night, wow. so that that we've done. So, um, you know, and like I say, you don't give them everything, but you know, we just make the cars work a little better, right? And they had twenty, and they had twenty three modifieds in there, and uh, you know, and figuring these tires out, you know, and uh, it's uh, you know doing your magic with these tires, you know. Yeah, absolutely, so, man. But. Uh, but anyway, so I'm really, I'm looking forward to it, and uh, I think the promoter John is too. Um, you know, he's really looking forward to it because he came over here a week ago Saturday and seen Mariah's new Super on the rack, and it has no body on it. But you just you can hit the button and it starts right up, and it's all complete minus the mo- uh, the body's not on it, and the seat's not in it, and the shroud's not built. But that's it. And uh, perfect. I'll bring my seat down when I come to yeah, Arizona. He, he was good. And, I, and I said, your car will look just like this one, you know, just different color. You know. Wow. So he was all over that. So, well, will you leave that seat out? You wouldn't need a seat. You can just sit in the floor and still build. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, right on, just, Jr. And he'd just be with his finger up, going one more lap, one more lap. <laughs> one I'd more be lap. just like Jr. Hell yes, yeah. I would. That's right. That's right. So. Well, dude, man, it's been a blast, man. I, I appreciate you taking the time, and and uh, it's it's always cool talking racing with the uh, with the true oh, yeah. with a oh, true stud it. with a true stud. I gotta say, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the old days. So, yeah, man. No, it's been a lot of fun. Been a lot of fun. Yeah, dude. Yeah. I, hopefully, you can make it down when I come down to September, or you can make it up. I don't know if we're up higher than you or not, but. Boy, if you can make it to the Nationals, I'll, I'll, I'll send you some info on it, and hopefully you yeah, can make it. That would, that. Be, that would be cool. I might even have to tempt you with a ride. Oh, really? Yes. In a cart? Yes. One of those 450s. We'll see if we can. Yeah. 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 That'd be a... Uh... Yeah, dude. It'll be an eye-opener. I, I I guarantee it'll be an eye-opener. Oh, I know it. I know it. I know it. But, oh, uh... yeah. I'd love it. A lot of fun. 
Yep. Yeah, Mariah's still running a shifter. She runs a shifter. It's been a couple months. Uh, she runs a shifter over here at Muscle and Honda Circuit, big road course over here. Yes. And uh, she did real good. She hadn't been in one for it was probably seven, eight months, and she and she went out there and won the last time she was out. And guys from Phoenix here and all kinds of stuff. So. Well, it's, it runs in the blood, man, doesn't it? <laughs> I know. I hope. Uh, I hope it does. Well, yeah, no kidding. Well, I hope so, to see it just so maybe some of it will rub off. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll wipe some of it on me. Got some JR on me here. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be good. It That'd would be, be good. good. Well, hey, man, thanks. Tell your lovely wife I said hi and tell Mariah hi and we'll talk soon. Okay. Thanks a lot, Terry. Okay, Hirsch. See you, man. Bye bye. Bye bye. Whoa, dude. Herschel McGriff Jr. Cool dude. Yeah. Cool dude. Uh, quickly before we go, we're a little over, but I'm going to keep you anyway. We're going to do one more thing. Junior late models, ages 10 to 16. Uh, they're in a car that they can move up in 602, 604 or a cast wet sump block. 2850 for the crates. Looks like 3035 for the, for the, uh, I, I, I would assume, that, would that be for the 602s or would that be with the... The heavy t- one should be the... Either the light s- one? The light one should be... The 602 would be the light number and probably okay. the cast one's the heavy number because okay. you can build it. Eight inch Hoosier, 58 left, and steel shocks. Loader, your thoughts? Is I that love good? it. Is that good? I love it. I'd have a 602 in there with a two barrel. Well, here, here's the deal, though. They, they say the top 10... Draw for position <clears throat> in the feature. 50 lap features. However, they're broken up in two 25 lap segments. You can work on it at the break, and the parent must have a signed release. Now, I'm just going to say this. If you're interested, I know the only place I know of so far that they're running, maybe back east or whatever, but is uh, you can go to www.racemadera.com to find out more about this junior late model. But I love the idea. Do you? I think, and and I, everybody, they sometimes they're always saying, "Oh, that kid's too young to be in there. That kid's too young to be in there." There was last night at the sprint cars. There was a fourteen-year-old jumped in a three-sixty sprint car, made very representation of himself. Sure, he's going to make mistakes, but he's ready. He's ready. I mean, I don't think you can take an age and put an age limit on something. I mean. Well, they had you saw the one. They had a ten year old back east at New Smyrna, yeah. one in a light model. Well, now I, I don't care whether you say no, they shouldn't, or yes, they should. The fact still remains: a ten year old won a super late model race. Just whooped your butt. Yeah, I mean, come on now. But yeah, and the, you know what? And and I'm going to go back to this. We we are losing racers. We've got you know your older generation. They're walking out. The kids nowadays have so much other stuff to do. By God, if I got one that's interested in going racing, I'm putting him in a car. If not, we're going to lose our sport. Uh, uh, yeah, you know. We, I mean, we lose, we've lose. we lost numbers. It used to be you went to, I can remember going out of South Sound when we first moved up here 20 years ago, 35 lay models qualifying for a, the 100 lot main. I know. it. Yeah, well, I mean, I understand it. I, I do mean, too. I get it. People are doing different things. They're nowadays. doing different things, and you, and and a lot of people have been priced out of the game. Mm-hmm. So, but if that ten year old or eleven year old or twelve year old has the interest, and he's willing to spend, I'm not saying you give this kid the car, and he doesn't have to do nothing, but I say they're interested in the car, just like at the go karts in this down there at, at at Salem at the indoor. By God, if the kid's out running around playing in the dirt, I'm not working on his cart. If he wants to learn what happens with his cart, what to do with his cart, explain to me what's going on with his cart, then I'll work on his cart. Otherwise, I'd put the thing back down on the ground and you're ready to go. Until you want to, and, and believe me, you get to these kids in a car like that, they're going to, you're going to want it. It's not. Well, you're either going to want it or you don't. Yeah. And if you don't, hey. That's fine. That's fine. But you're right. You're. I, I think you're 100% right. And and look at what it does for, 
um, school. You know, it helps grades. It helps confidence. It helps, I mean, you could go on and on and on of the things that's, that's probably going to help. You and, know, the self-esteem, the and, and keeping speaking, them out of trouble. And like. speaking of the grades part of it, Devin West is a straight-A student running in the Legends car. So when it comes to time to go to Wenatchee, he could take off a Thursday and a Friday from school. Because he's not behind. He's not behind. He's already taking college classes. He's doing the prep stuff. It's, oh, my God. So, uh, but that's all part of. That's the all de- part. It is. If you're going racing, you have to do your schoolwork. Well, this is how much Devin wants to go racing. He's already de- taking college courses. He's, he, he is, he's a straight-A student. So and and look at the kid Devin Borden. Yep, straight A student. He was in that 360, by the way. Oh, and don't you kid yourself for a second. This kid is ready. Don't kid yourself for one split second that he's not. So, but that's yes. You know, I I agree. And a lot of it, and and a lot of it, my opinion is, uh, if it was my kid, yeah, and I feel they're ready, I'm. Hey, it, it, I'm putting them there. That, that that's right. And and if the other guys will sign off and say, "Hey, yeah, we're we're cool with it," why wouldn't you let the kid run? That's well, we've had. We've, I mean, I can, yeah, maybe, but then you get the other side. What is it? Their minds aren't fully developed yet. They're, they're they're having to make rapid decisions that you know they're having to do that anyway. The biggest thing that I see, and is part of the dictating part of it, is the insurance company. You know, insurance for the, that the track buys, some of them have stipulations on what you can do and what you can't. Right. So at that point in time, you know, you may have to right. go someplace else to do it. You may have different outcomes. Well, out- I, and, but, I, but I think if, if, if Madera Speedway can do it, www.racemadera.com, uh, if you're wanting more information on these junior late models, if South Sound had it, if you had Evergreen wanting to do it, yeah, you maybe had, say, Hermiston or, or, or Yakima or somebody else like that, you know, or, or, or even Wenatchee. How do you deny that when you've got four or five all tracks? All, you know, if, if Madera's doing it, there's got to be something there. Yeah, and it'd be interesting to see. I'm, I'm, in fact, I'm going to uh, do a little bit of looking up this week on it just out of curiosity. With yeah, the- I, I, I think that would be cool. But- so maybe for, uh, maybe for next week we can uh, – talk a little bit about what's going on hey and and, and the other thing those of you listening in we don't have anybody live tonight which is fine i I get it i understand this is for consumption so just as long as you're enjoying it drop us a line go to terrybridgesracing.com or drop us a line on facebook at the northwest race report and let us know if you like the show we're still talking about you know do we want to continue it through the winter give us some feedback let us know what you'd like to see. Would you like to see this continue Monday nights? Do you care less? What would you like to see or hear or have more of on Monday nights if, if we could do it? Let us know. TerryBridgesRacing.com. You can leave us a message there. Just go to the contact page. Hit up Jeff Eden on Facebook, or you can hit up me, Terry Bridges, at the Northwest Race Report, or hit us all up at the Northwest Race Report. They're all on there. The Loader, Lippy, myself. But let us know. Uh, give us some feedback. Yeah, that'll and that'll help us where to go with our topics too. Exactly. You know, it's sometimes it, we kind of go off on a different tangent because we don't really have an idea what interest. Them, right. So, so we're trying to touch on a little bit of everything. Yeah, if we can do something that you're interested in. Hey, we'll do our best. Congratulations to Daniel Moore, Ricky Schlick. Yes, indeed. And Kevin Barbera, if that's the right driver. <laughs> we got one of three, so we stand a good chance. Yeah. Was... Congratulations to all those winners. Uh, look up the junior late models. It's a cool deal. I think it could be something that could help maybe uh, grow some things around here even uh, to go with, with this, you know, to, to help some of these other late model series. That's, that, like you said, that's what we, we need replacements. We need, we need some different stuff. Cool things. Happening. And don't forget T's and Tops at www.bulldogshirt.com. Matt Fontaine. Yeah, check him out. He'll take good care of you. 
Jeff, thanks, man. Thanks for being here another Monday. It's been a pleasure. Yep. And a big shout out to our uh, Blue Line Graphics in the seat guest, the legendary Herschel McGriff Jr. JR, thanks, man. Really appreciate you being on the show. Um, you're a class act all the way. No doubt about it. We'll be back next Monday. Stay tuned to Northwest Race Report on Facebook or at TerryBridgesRacing.com backslash. Um, well, listen live is the page. But you go to TerryBridgesRacing.com. We'll be trying to have some updates on there. We'll let you know what's happening next week. We'll get a cool guest on here. And uh, hopefully you'll uh, join in with us. Until then, when somebody's on the bottom on bump sticks... You're going to have trouble catching them. Oh, yes, you are. <laughs> Go to the high side. We'll see you next week. Take care, everybody. Thanks for the support.